When I was a kid, I was obsessed with this game called Oni Chambara, Bikini Zombie Slayers. That is a sexualized portrayal of women. The whole point is that they're in very skimpy bikinis and it's completely inappropriate for killing zombies. Look, my inner queer child and my inner feminist sometimes fight on the loves of games and movies of my childhood. It just is a thing. If if you know, you know. <laughs> Hello lovely people, my name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Okay, here's two things that are gonna be confusing. First of all, today we are gonna be talking celebrity gossip. <laughs> it's a little bit outside of my usual wheelhouse. That's why it's a weird Wednesday, okay? If you're upset, you don't want to listen to this bollocks, totally fine. Skeptic Saturday is the one for you. Every Saturday we have a video that is skeptic themed. This is Weird Wednesday where I use the opportunity to talk about weird other stuff that I'm interested in and this story interests me. The other thing that might confuse you is that I had COVID. I'm feeling much better, thank you. But <laughs> because this is a Wednesday, I'm slipping a video in between two that I had previously recorded. So in my next video on Saturday, I'll have COVID again. <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about a movie critique by Lena Wilson for the New York Times on a film called Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Disclaimer, I've not seen the movie. Double disclaimer, I hadn't actually heard of the movie until I saw Cat Black talking about this controversy in a video. I'll leave that down below, I think she makes a lot of good points. So I haven't seen the movie, I can't say whether the... Uh, the article is a fair criticism because I don't know most of it reads as pretty standard critic stuff especially for the New York Times it's quite overly critical it's quite scathing but that's that's how critics be the controversy comes from this one brief throwaway statement the only thing that really sets bodies 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 apart is its place in the a24 hype machine where it doubles as a 95 minute advertisement for cleavage and Charlie XCX's latest single Okay. One of the actresses that was in the movie, Amanda Stenberg, then sent a DM to Lena Wilson, the critic, saying, Your review was great. Maybe if you had gotten your eyes off my tits, you could have watched the movie. Which, I'll be honest, I think is a pretty funny DM. <laughs> I think that's a pretty funny DM. Lena replied, Hey, Amanda, generally a big fan of your work. This sure is something. Wishing you well in your career and life. Have a nice, nice life. Have a nice knife. <laughs> I feel like if that was it, this would definitely not be a video anywhere or a controversy or anything interesting because it's basically a critic made a little comment that was pretty uncool and this actress was unhappy with. The actress sent a funny private message about it. The critic was like, I don't love that, but have a good day. Like if that was it, this was just, uh, that's just a normal interaction between two people who have different views and this is how they shared those views. But then Lena Wilson shared the DM publicly, and so it became a big stink. She shared it saying, do you think she Instagram DM'd Alison Wilmore, Justin Chang, and Anthony Lane like this, or? I don't know what that's a reference to. I don't know if those people are also critics that mentioned cleavage in their reviews. I think it's pretty safe to assume that Amanda just saw this review, had this review, shared with her or whatever and was like, ugh, I'm sick of that particular criticism. Let's just send them a funny DM to sort of point it out. I don't know. I have mixed feelings on this because I just think on a technicality level and in terms of, you know, what is the right thing or whatever, I don't think Amanda did anything wrong. I don't think she deserves any criticism for this DM. I don't think she's done anything worth criticising. I totally think she's in you know, the, the clear, so to speak. Not that there has to be a bad guy. I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff where both of them are coming from. And my kind of main takeaway is that neither of these people should be bullied for this situation. That's my main feeling. I, I do think just from like a, for, for your own self and from kind of a professional standpoint, probably don't DM a critic in response to, you know, a, a, a movie review. I just generally think that's probably not a very good idea. It might be cathartic and sometimes I reply to mean YouTube comments. You know, none of us are perfect. But I think in general that probably is a mistake. Likewise, I think Lena Wilson made a mistake and just totally dropped herself in it sharing this private DM because we'll look at her video about it in a second where she says this, but her complaint is basically that she was she didn't want to be 
attacked by someone with a huge following, but it was Lena Wilson that made this public. It was a completely private, personal interaction between these two people until Lena Wilson shared it. And she shared a follow-up tweet saying, always weird when the homophobia is coming from inside the house, but this is something. So Stenberg is both non-binary and bisexual. She prefers the term pansexual. Me too, but we all live under the bi umbrella and that is sometimes easier to use. Um, and that is what Lena Wilson means by homophobia coming from inside the house. The implication there being that this is homophobic as a response. It's not. <laughs> we, I think we can all look at this and agree it's not homophobic. But let's look at both of their their public responses. They both did a video response to this uh, where they kind of explained what they were thinking, what they were talking about when they... when. Amanda sent the message and when Lena Wilson shared the message. Um, so we'll look at those, we'll listen to all the facts, and then we'll talk about how we feel. There's a dog barking outside. What's wrong, buddy? Okay, so this is Amanda Stenberg's response to the entire the entire situation. So I'm receiving a lot of uh, <laughs> commentary on the internet for being a very naughty girl um, and sending a DM that I thought was hilarious. Uh, but... I thought it was funny too. It was a funny response to a critic. I don't think she should have sent it directly to the critic. That's just my opinion. Like I said, I don't think she's done anything wrong. I don't think she should be criticised for it. I, I don't know, there's something refreshing about... I guess she's a famous actress, like, she's probably used to it, but there's something really refreshing about somebody getting, like, all this drama and hate on the internet and just being like, this is stupid. It's making me laugh. Let's just talk about it quickly. I just li I like her reaction to this. That's all. Basically, there's this film critic, her name is Lena Wilson, and she writes the New York Times. And she wrote a criticism of a movie that I just had come out called Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. She described in her review uh, the movie as a 95-minute advertisement for cleavage, um, which I thought was hilarious. I DM'd Lena, and I said, <laughs> I said, I said, great review. Maybe if you had gotten your eyes off my tits, you could have watched the movie. <laughs> it's funny. All right. Okay. Listen, I I thought it was I thought it was hilarious. I thought because Lena is gay, I am also gay. I thought that as gay people, we would both find this comment funny. I was also curious to know what Lena would say to such a statement, but Lena decided to publish it and uh, also says that I am homophobic for saying that. The intention of why I said that, and this is look, this is my experience as an actress. It's quite surprising. I mean, it shouldn't be surprising, I guess, at this point, but the amount of commentary that I receive on my boobs is so extreme. Uh, and this has happened since I was a teenager. I could literally be wearing a t-shirt and just because of the size of my boobs, um, there will be some sort of sexualization or commentary on my chest. Uh, in this movie, I'm wearing a tank top. I know that when I'm wearing a tank top, the result is there's going to be some cleavage because I have boobs. So I knew that this, this comment was probably mostly directed towards me. And I think that Lena was trying to make a commentary about A24 sexualizing me sexualizing my body, um, you know, exploiting young women um, in order to sensationalize them, to, to make their media more popular. I understand the angle. I I can tell you that the I wore this tank top in this in this movie because me and the costume designer thought that it fit the character well. You know, I do get tired of people talking about my chest. It, it seems to be in Hollywood. It's not normalized to to have boobs that are above an A or a B cup. Like I, I I've actually noticed this in my time as an actress, um, and so there seems to be a lot of unwarranted conversation around my chest that just kind of baffles me. Anyways, Lena, um, I thought your review was hilarious. I thought my DM was funny. <laughs> uh, I. Did not mean to harass you, do not wish you any harm. You are allowed to have your criticisms on my work, and I'm allowed to have my criticisms of your work. And 
that is a-okay with me um and i wish you the, the best i thought that was a great i thought that was a great response but also there's so much i resonate with this in in this story there's like there's discussions of homophobia there's uh talking about being uh, a woman being sexualized especially for your breasts like this is all this is my jam right it's different for somebody like Amandla because she is in the Hollywood industry, right? And that's a very different place. And I read an article, I'll share this to, uh, where the fuck is it? Where's the where tabs? Where's the tab gone? Oh, it was in uh, Out. It kind of points out that Wilson is, or it suggests that Wilson is playing into stereotypes about black women in media as well. Even so, as just a person on the internet, I expect it to happen today. <laughs> I get a lot of commentary and sexualization to do with my boobs. Like Amandla says, I can even be wearing a t-shirt and I will get some kind of commentary, sometimes to my business email, about my tits. And it is frustrating. It is, it is frustrating. And it's like one of those things where a lot of the time I wear vests because I think they're super comfortable. This is one of my favorite tops. I want it in videos quite a lot because I just love the design. I love the fit. I love the comfort, but it's a vest. And so because my boobs exist, sometimes you can see cleavage. And you know what? I'm very anti-purity culture. I don't think anyone should feel ashamed that this is not, if you, <laughs> if you have ever like seen a video or a movie or something and been like, love those boobs. We've all been there, right? Like, it's completely normal to see somebody's body and be attracted to it. No shame for that. I even think that having conversations about that kind of thing with your friends, I think it's fine to be like, oh, in that movie, that actress had super hot boobs. I think that's completely fine. It's very different when you make it a public commentary. <laughs> when somebody, and like in this case, they've worked super, super hard on a movie right? They've worked really hard on a movie, it's just come out, uh, reviews are coming out, there's criticisms, there's, uh, you know, the review contained praise as well. Amanda has to deal with this thing where it's like, again, her tits are being brought into it. And it's like, there's just some things where you should keep it in your head. <laughs> you don't have to comment out loud to the person that you are attracted to, to tell them that you're attracted to them. It's not like it's the worst thing in the world, it doesn't really matter most of the time those comments are harmless and um innocent but i can totally see where she's coming from because it gets frustrating when you work you work like super super hard on something experience of this my like equivalent would be um especially when it's like manosphere red pill stuff people doing reaction videos when you put all of this work into making something you do all this research spend loads of time learning things providing sources um, coming up with arguments and then somebody's criticism or commentary on that centers around something that you can't help about your body. It's frustrating. It is frustrating. Like I said, I really like Amandla's response to this. I think it's very funny. I'm really glad that she seems to be taking it so lighthearted because this kind of internet, it really is over a small silly interaction, you know. Um, I'm, I'm just grateful that she seems to be just sort of having fun with it, thinking it's a bit of a silly whatever, and is just responding to be like, look, this is my perspective. I wish you the best. It's, I, I was trying to be funny whilst making a point. And is just like reacting sort of casually and nicely to that. There's no, it's not become like a fiery fight sort of thing. Um, I think that their reaction was really, really good. For the flip side of the coin on how to react to how to react to a, a, a public s sort of scandal. It's very non-scandalous for a scandal, but that's the best way I can think of it. For the flip side of how to react to something like this, let's have a look at Lena Wilson's TikTok uh, about why she shared the DM. Let's just look at it and then we'll talk about it. Hi, haven't been on here in a while, um, but I was just checking my Instagram DMs, but I looked at my DM requests and found this, which I'm just gonna let speak for itself for a little bit. For context, if you haven't seen, I reviewed Bodies, Bodies, Bodies for the New York Times and uh, really didn't like it and said so. Ironically praised the acting, though. 
Uh, I don't want anything else to come of this. I am devastated to have received this message in the first place. I was a genuine huge fan of hers. But I'm posting- I I didn't want anything else to come of this. Then don't share it publicly? Nothing else was going to come of it. it. It was a bit of a an awkward interaction because obviously the joke didn't land with Lena and, and you know, there was scope if it kept being a private conversation. There was scope for um, Amanda to have explained and for Lena to have explained, oh, sorry, I receive homophobic criticisms and I kind of felt that was what I thought this was. Um, they, they could have had a private conversation about it, sorted it out, and it would have been fine. The only reason anything came of it is because Lena decided to share it publicly. So I really don't understand that. I also think it's such an overreaction to be like, I was a huge fan. The implication being, not anymore. <laughs> I'm devastated by this. It was just a DM. It was just like a funny DM. Again, like, I, as a film critic, I can see why Lena might have been like, that was a stupid idea. I don't think an actor should have DM'd me about my criticism. I think that would be a fair response. But to be like, I'm no longer a fan. This is devastating. I just had to share it. It just seems like an enormous overreaction to like quite a simple joke that was in the spirit of like, hey, we both like ladies. Maybe you'll get a kick out of this and you might understand that I'm making a little bit of a point about the sexualization of my chest. But no, no it's, in my opinion, massive overreaction. Posting it because I don't want this person who has more social power than me to think that it's fucking okay to do something like this. And that's all. More social power. Like, because Amandla has is a famous actress and has a lot of followers but it wasn't it's not it wasn't a public comment it was a private dm there was no like it's not there were no responses there was no backlash there was no setting fans on lena wilson until lena wilson made it public it wasn't a thing it's as if this message in itself somehow incited something whereas the reality is nothing would have happened at all nobody would have talked about it because nobody would have known about it if Lena Wilson hadn't shared this. So that's very weird to me. So she also tweeted this out. Uh, Lena, me, spends one line of a 500 word review facetiously commenting on how A24 objectifies young women to sell content. Random men on twitter.com and also, apparently, Amanda Stenberg, local dyke cannot stop talking about boobies. I really, I, I absolutely, as a bi woman, I absolutely do not feel like that was what Amanda was saying in that message at all. Granted, we have the perspective of hindsight now because we've seen the video where Amandla has explained where she's coming from. And like I said, I know exactly what it is like to constantly have like criticism of you and your work reduced to comments about your boobs. So it's fair to think that it's easier for us now to understand and interpret the original message. Um, so, you know, a bit of leeway for Lena there. I want I just want to show you what the wardrobes actually look like in Bodies, 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 because this is this is important for context as well. Okay, this is the main cast's outfit. Would you call that an advertisement for cleavage? Okay, we've got one person in like a full. What the fuck is it called? We have a round neck that's up here, like a like a like a like a T. It's not a scoop. Is the bigger one, and then there's a little. You know what I mean, anyway. We've got one person who's completely covered. Um, we got one person in a dress and one person in a tank top and then another person in kind of a vest uh, that covers her cleavage. So two out of four of these people don't have anything on show at all. So that's only 50% of them. It's not like, right, listen, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with this game called Oni Chambara, Bikini Zombie Slayers. That is a sexualized portrayal of women because all the characters in that are literally the whole point is that they're in very skimpy bikinis and it's completely inappropriate for killing zombies i loved the game just like i love fucking lollipop chainsaw look my inner queer child and my inner feminist sometimes fight on uh the the loves of games and movies of my childhood it just is a thing if if you know you know <laughs> that's sexualization because it's inappropriate for the context it's you know, showing women's bodies for the sake of arousing the audience. It doesn't really have anything to do with the plot. 
the wardrobe for bodies 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 it just makes it looks like for like i don't know if they're teenagers or young adults whatever but it looks like for like people in their late teens or 20s in normal clothes it looks like the sort of clothes that are like i've worn a dress like that i wear vests like this i wear big baggy t-shirts like i've owned <laughs> i feel like i've owned all of those items of clothing and it would be really frustrating to me to have that pointed as a as a criticism that that was somehow because th here's here's the important thing right and here's i think what amandla was sort of trying to point out with regards to uh lena's criticism is that this kind of clothing is normal it's appropriate for the character it's appropriate for the situation therefore the sexualization of her chest is in the eye of the reviewer right and that was that was what she was pointing out with that that joke if you could have kept your eyes off my tits you might have enjoyed the movie you know that's there's a funny way of pointing that out it's like it's on you for sexualizing me just wearing normal clothes that fit the character and again like i said earlier if you notice boobs and you like them that is totally fine just then have the wherewithal to be like i won't include include that in my new york times critique of this movie that's how i feel about that um and then just like to jump from that to homophobia so here's the thing here's here's what i understand based on you know the the tweets that lena wilson wrote about this and it's part of why i think context is important i totally believe that in response to this article and just in general she probably has received homophobia by people on twitter you know or she says i think she says predominantly men on twitter have been homophobic in response to this and therefore she might be predisposed to kind of assume that that's where a person is coming from but it, it's it's wrong to then put that onto amandla and her message because if you look at this i mean tell me if you disagree down below i don't see anything homophobic in this message i didn't interpret this as like a pointing out that lena wilson was gay i like i i think this would be an equally appropriate comment if it was a man who had written the article you know if it was a straight man that had written the article i think the comment would i think the comment would make just as much sense like if it was a straight woman i think the comment would make just as much sense because it's about uh subconscious ideas of women's bodies that we have right it's not about you can't stop looking at tits because you're gay that's not the subtext of this message in any way and i think i think lena wilson was mistaken in reading that into this message and then by sharing it and making it public and having such an overreaction she's just introduced all of this backlash and then that is gonna it's gonna be a self-fulfilling prophecy that's my main worry because this sort of thing now going public is going to be fuel for people who are homophobic and then she will get homophobic reactions and hopefully having seen amandla's response and stuff hopefully she won't think this but it'd be very easy to then for that to reinforce the idea that oh it's amandla's fault that amandla was involved in that somehow it's a bit like um it makes me think of the karen thing you know where it's like karen as like a term in its origins and its general usage is completely appropriate and acceptable right it's about specifically white people being entitled and rude and this is the I can't, it was ages ago that i actually looked it up but the purpose of it was about white people being bitches to people of color and like service jobs and things like that you know um uh, but a lot of people who were sexist used the kind of karen trend as an opportunity to be sexist it's proper and correct to call that out to be upset about it if you know that word was being used against you just in an excuse to be sexist i mean you you see it if you go on any like karen video there'll be there'll be some really sexist comments um and it's okay to be upset by that and call that out it's wrong to blame the people who are using the word correctly and the people who originally coined the word because there was no sexist intent behind that it's that same kind of thing am i making any sense <laughs> basically i completely understand where lena could be coming from because i believe that she probably is receiving a lot of homophobia in response to this i don't think amandla has any responsibility for that and i think lena's mistake is putting that 
onto a mandala who had a completely different point in mind and was just trying to make that point in a, a jokey one-to-one private setting and then lena made it public made her overreaction public and that was what caused this whole debacle i don't know much about either of these people outside of this situation so i'm like abstaining from any general commentary on who they are as people i'm not really interested um to be honest i i will just reiterate that i don't think either of these people deserve to be bullied or harassed for this i think that This is a great opportunity to point out what Amandala pointed out and to make fair criticism of that review. Kind of like Amandala sort of rounded off with, it is perfectly fine for Lena to have that perspective and to make that criticism. Likewise, people, especially the people being criticised, have the same right to answer back, to critique their work. And I I just don't think she handled it well but I think we should also have a bit of understanding over the fact that just as Amandla is sick and tired of critiques and comments on her chest Lena Wilson is probably equally sick and tired of homophobic comments Lena's mistake like I said was putting that onto Amandla putting the onus onto Amandla and as if she had some responsibility for that that's the the big mistake but when you are subject to bigotry on the regs it can make you a little bit standoffish a little bit defensive in that way so i think we should give her a little bit of grace there that's basically what i think i really really like amandala's video in response to this that's like the main uh thing that i enjoyed about this and i just think separate from the entire like controversy and conversation between the two of them i think that amandala's way of handling this is just like a bit of online controversy was so fantastic just to treat it like it is as something that is so kind of silly and insignificant it was just a a brief exchange about one line and a thing and a silly dm and to just take it lightly to show that it's not it's not hurt she's not upset it's just this is just something that comes with the territory but to use it as an opportunity to educate on why she felt that way and to just be like, look, I wish you all the best. This is kind of silly. It's making me laugh. Let's move on. Um, I think that was a great way to handle any kind of low-key, silly internet, I don't know, Hollywood drama. Um, I really respect that. I think that's probably part of the problem for Lena Wilson as well, is that Amanda handled this so well. And unfortunately, Lena, while she should get some grace, in my opinion, uh, just didn't just didn't handle herself very well in this situation and that's not a commentary on her being a a good or a bad person i i think it's good from my perspective a lot of what i've seen is people criticizing her reaction and not her as a person which is really good yeah i think that's the i think that's the main problem is like this is a conversation a silly little thing between two people but one of them handled it really well and one of them handled it really badly and so it comes off looking much worse for lena wilson because she made all the the silly mistakes (laughs) let me know what you think about this down below do you think i'm way off base on anything i will leave the article that i mentioned uh in the description it's got links to the videos if you want to watch those i'll leave a link to cat black's video as well and just give me your thoughts leave a cheeky little cheeky little like leave a little comment you should also you should definitely subscribe if you haven't already it's a it's a challenge i i bet i bet you you can do it you can't do it i bet you can't do it reverse psychology i don't know how to do this <laughs> thank you so much for watching if you enjoy my content you can come hang out on my gaming channel on youtube we have a lot of fun playing silly games you can also come hang out on twitch i am live three times a week at the moment we're doing longer streams now it's super super fun we got sherlock holmes on mondays we got slightly random usually story-based games on Wednesdays and we've got spooky Saturdays for scares and spoops. I'll be live there in about two hours after this video goes up. Before we go, I would like to give a big thank you and a shout out to my giant chickens over on Patreon. I hope you have a very lovely week and I will see you really soon.